So the January transfer window has opened and there is a lot of work to do to improve our squad. We might have already completed our January business already, but if you know me, probably not. Let's go see what I've done. So we, before we get to the confirmation of our signings, we have been offered the chance to change our season's expectations. I want to see, oh, they are increasing it quite a bit. Avoid relegation might be the one. Um, Mid-table finish, top half finish. Um, I think... I think she would just say top half finish. We'll get as much money as we possibly can. We now need to finish in the top half, of course. But that does give us 10 million quid and 230,000 pounds available in the wages, giving us enough room and scope to be able to improve our squad. But of course, I have already signed three players and they are joining. You can see them on the screen now. Billy Abraham is a three and a half million pound signing left back English which is, of course, one of the major issues in our squad. We need English players. And he's going to be our backup player on the left-hand side. It probably means the end of Roberto De Giulio in the squad, if we can get him sold. But I'm um, happy to bring in Billy Abraham. He can play on either side. And he just gives us another option on that left-hand side, which we've been sorely lacking during this injury crisis. We're also bringing in Steve Naylor. Just another English backup centre-half. Good bit of potential on this lad. It'll be decent enough as a third, fourth choice centre-half. And... Relatively pleased to get him in for, what was it, two and a half million quid. English players coming cheap. Doesn't often happen, but sometimes it does. And then the big one. The big one. Marvin Mungana was signed from Bayern Munich for £13.75 million. Pounds. Now, initially, at the very least, whilst Ian Salvi is still injured, he will be starting at right back. And what a fantastic right back he will be, by the way. But then I've got a decision to make once Ian Salvi returns from his injury. Do we put Ian Salvi back in at right back? drop David Pierce, move the defensive midfielder into central midfield and then play Mungana as a deep lying playmaker in the centre of midfield. It might be the option. It might be the way to go. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Ian Salvi's still out for another couple of months so it's not going to be a decision I'll make anytime soon. But at least for now, Marvin Mungana comes in and he is by far the best right back at the club. So three relatively good signings. The two English lads, of course, just coming in to fill out the squad. Mongana is a real, real upgrade. An upgrade I didn't think I was going to be able to get. I didn't think Bayern Munich would sell him for so cheap, especially at 20 years old, with still potential to grow and the versatility he offers in the squad is absolutely phenomenal. You know, we could even play him on the right-hand side if we're really, really desperate. Hopefully that's never the case. But um, yeah, I'm really, really pleased to get these three lads in. So thinking about the rest of the January transfer window, what that might mean in terms of our squad, what we might need, what we could sell more importantly, because obviously 10 million quid is not going to get me much in terms of first team players who will be direct replacements in the first 11. But if we are able to sell the likes of De Giulio, who we've just replaced in the squad, where is he? There he's there, Roberto De Giulio. Uh, injuries is a real concern with me, particularly with him. Is he injury prone on his thing? Uh, he's not actually classed as it being injury prone, but he was injured. He was injured when he joined the club. He's been injured twice this season. I'm prepared to let him go on that basis. Then we've got the likes of Nismet Nikolic, who's returned from loan. He's worth six million. We'll look to see how much money we can get for him. And maybe there's a few others who might be end up being sacrificed. We could potentially sell Jacob Samuelson, who's worth 19 mil. Uh, see how much we can get for him. Bring in a cheap striker replacement. And then look to reinvest that money elsewhere in the squad. So we've got options. We've definitely got some uh, versatility in the squad to be able to sell. Uh, it's just finding the players to actually be able to bring in to improve our first 11. There's not many areas. Particularly with Mungana now coming in. Um, the defensive midfield position might be an area we don't need to improve anymore. And on that basis it becomes the right hand side. It's a massive massive issue. Uh, what's his face? Alfonso's not doing very well there at all. He is more of a natural striker. I'm thinking maybe he should even just drop Karaviev to that right-hand side. He's not he's not been superb this season. He scored 10 goals in 20 games, which is fantastic. And he should be a great right-winger, uh, striker, but he's not. <laughs> I mean, he is, but he's not. You know what I mean? He's not, like, unbelievable. So maybe I'll swap Alfonso and Karaviev about. Or maybe I'll just try and find someone who's natural on that right-hand side. So it's going to be a difficult January transfer window. We don't really know what we want, where we're going with it. But you will be updated as the January transfer window goes through. We do have six games so far. Wolves, Burnley, Wolves, Arsenal, Spurs and Man United. Some big games in there. Hopefully a return to fitness for a lot of our players before the bigger sides come at us. But we've got four way games. I'm not expecting much from this side. Uh, particularly with our poor runner form recently. So we'll just go through it. I'll update you on the results. I'll update you on the transfer business. 
I'll see you whenever the next bit comes. So as part of the sacrifices to the gods that we have to make, David Nespoir, our backup central midfielder, looks like he might be moving on. We've received a £13.25 million offer from Anderlecht, which we will accept. And if we get that straight up front, fantastic. We might be able to do something special with it. So we've just played Wolves in the FA Cup third round and won 2 0 away from home. Martin Alfonso and Karavia have switched for this game. Alfonso was playing up top, Karavia on the right hand side, and Alfonso got a 12th minute goal to put us 1 0 up, and Steve Neal got the other in the 16th minute. So Nismet Nikolic will be leaving the club with a greedy deal with Southampton for £5.75 million. Pounds. He's a decent enough centre back with potential to grow, but. Uh, I've got enough centre-backs now with Steve Neal coming in the club. He wasn't part of our squad for the first half of the season. He was out on loan, so getting £5.75 million in pr represents a pretty good profit on him. We only signed him last year, and uh, just happy to get the money in. So we've just played Burnley in the Premier League away from home on 1-2-0. We're continuing with Martin Alfonso up top, and Yuri Karaviev moving to that right-hand side, and it's definitely improved Alfonso's game. Whether it's improved, Karaviev's game still yet to be seen. But he got a goal in the 42, uh, 42nd minute. And Alexander got a goal in the 56th. They give us a comfortable win. So we are struggling to attract much interest, interest for Roberto De Giulio. But David Nespoir will be leaving the club and joining Anderlecht for £13.25 million. Let's see what that does to our club coffers. So we've now got 20 million quid to spend. And 120 odd K available in the wages. Nismet Nikolic still hasn't left the club yet. So that will be an extra few million coming in. And if we can get Roberto De Giulio moving on, even if it's for something like six, seven million, I'll be relatively content with that. So there's Nismet Nikolic going to Southampton for 5.75 million pounds. We do have some offers in for De Giulio. Oh, look, look at the state of them offers. Absolutely terrible. Well, that now increases our transfer budget to 25 million with 140 K available in the wages. We have definitely accrued enough to be able to make a big, big sign. And I think we'll just need to find them. So I've made a couple of offers for a couple of wingers. The first of which is Frederick Hansen from uh, FC Midland. Now, there's a theme with these two. They're both wingers. Um, obviously, we don't deploy wingers currently, but it would give us that option to be able to change up the player role and see if it has a significant effect, at least in one of the positions or both of them. Um, in our overall player he, and he's a fantastic natural winger you know he, there's not much more about his game apart from being a winger but um, I believe we've offered about eight million pounds for him and the other one on the left hand side is a little bit better Roger from Brazil now he is again reminds me a lot of Sergei Yemeljanov who we had at Nottingham Forest but another winger uh, we've had to offer around what was it 16.25 million obviously as you can see a lot of these deals have postponed a lot of the payments to future transfer windows when we won't be here um, but I would like to bring both of these boys in who probably has made a couple of more sales of foreign lads uh, Oscar Remberg probably and uh, Matthias Lachaud or back up left wingers but it would definitely provide some effective competition on them wings while we've really haven't seen the best performances out of the players who are currently playing there so having tried to unsex <laughs> unsuccessfully moving on Roberto De Giulio we are going to loan him out we're getting 120k per month which isn't so bad, so we're going to get close to a million pounds for over the course of the rest of this season for him. Uh, I'd offered him out for as low as five, and nobody was interested in making a reasonable offer. So I need to get him off the books because he's a foreign player who can't be registered, and uh, it needs to open up spots for other players coming in. So I kind of need this deal to happen. So he'll probably end up going to the MLS at either Atlanta or Los Angeles. So here is Frederick Hansen coming in for the £8.5 million fee we agreed with FC Copen... Well, no, it wasn't. It was Midland. Yes, it was Midland. <laughs> I did get that correct in the end. But yeah, he comes in. He would be very much a backup right winger. And that probably means the end of Oscar Remberg's spell at the club. We do have to make space. And Oscar Remberg, whilst he is a very, very talented player and on a similar le level to the DNA we've just brought in, um, we've got Yuri Karaviev there to play as an inverted winger. I wanted a second option to be able to change the player role to uh, try and affect our tactic a little bit more. So Oscar Remberg is the sacrifice we're going to have to make. So we've just smashed Wolves away from home in the league. Four, was it in the league? I think it was. 4-0. <laughs> I'm getting very confused. Yuri Karaviev with a brace. Jim Garcia with a brace as well from centre-back. And that switch between Alfonso and Karaviev is definitely the right thing to do. And I think Karaviev's going to be very, very effective on that right-hand side. And Alfonso's playing much better as a result up front. So we've received a few offers from clubs for Oscar Remberg. This one is the one I think I'm going to accept. Sion are offering £9 million up front, £13 million over the course of a couple of years. 
Um, and I think I'm going to accept that and reject the others. They, they're all asking for weight contributions, so I'm not taking that into account, really. But it'll be another £10 million or so coming into the coffers for this transfer window. <laughs> Which got absolutely smashed. At home against Arsenal, we were the better side, going by the match stats. And we got B4-0. Xavi Adam, Giovanni Otario, Romario Barrow, William Saliba. Uh, absolutely smashed. He's our next signing, Roger, the left winger, joining us for £16.25 million. It's only taken away £7.25 million though, of our £22 million budget. And he will come in and probably be our starter on that left-hand side. Now, Alexander has done well there. Don't get me wrong, but he's not a natural there. Uh, I'm interested in getting him involved as a winger on that left-hand side, see how that sort of goes. Maybe I might end up reverting back to Alexander. He will be on the bench and we can bring him on at any time. But Roger, at the very least, will be our starter, at least initially. So there's Roberto De Giulio leaving on loan for the rest of the season. Of course, the 120k per week uh, per month uh, deal is not too bad at all. Uh, the foreign player limit does play a major concern in every single transfer window. It is a pain uh, having an only 17 player limit for that particularly when your entire first 11 is pretty much foreign. But uh, he's left now. We'll see how he gets on in his uh, loan spell. But he, we won't see him again anyway. So with Roger coming in, where he of course can then look to offload Matthias Lachaud, our backup left winger. And we have received a £15.5 million offer from Standard. So we're accepting it. £10.5 million of that up front. Uh, a little bit of a wage contribution from ourselves, which is not a problem whatsoever. And uh, that'll bring us some money back into the squad. I'm thinking maybe signing a central midfielder, maybe, maybe not. I mean, I love Marlon Gill, and I don't think we're going to get better than him. And the fact that he's <laughs> he's our corner threat, he's six foot six. Uh, so at that stage, I'm maybe not looking to replace him. Who would I want? Would, can I get a centre back? If I can get a, like a real top quality centre back to maybe replace either David Noon or. Probably David Nuno. I think Jim Garcia is here to stay. Yeah, Nuno's done okay. He's averaging a 7.06 during his time here. And he's a fantastic centre-half. And it's unlikely we're going to be able to find anybody better. But I am going to be looking. So I've done me looking for a centre-back. And the only one I think I would sign is this fella. Mohamed Chadli. Very, very good centre-back. The problem with him is we need 40 million quid. And we need it up front. We can't do it in instalments. That is his minimum fee release clause. We currently have 14. We've got potentially 20 coming in. Uh, can we get it over the line? <laughs> Maybe not. But uh, I think if we do get 40 million, I think I'm actually going to do it. And there is Oscar Remberg out of the club. £10.5 million coming into the coffers. We were only getting £6.75 million of that deal, unfortunately, due to an 80% uh, transfer revenue retained. They have actually <laughs> dropped that because our finances were looking a little bit shaky, but now the overall balance is 36 million. We're only going to lose about another 9 million pound over the course of the season, so they should definitely re uh, give me that money back, please. So we've just played Southampton in the FA Cup and won 1-0. Jim Garcia with the only goal in the 32nd minute. So I'm looking at where to spend my money, right? Because, of course, it's burning a hole in my pocket. And it's unlikely that we're going to get the 40 million pounds required to sign that centre-half. I'm looking at defensive midfielders instead, and Zoran Babic is the one who stood out to me. Um, but comparing him to David Pierre here, he is obviously a very different player. Technically, he's far superior. Mentally, he's not so good. Physically, he's not so good either. But how important is that for a defensive midfielder who plays as a deep line playmaker? I'm not sure. He looks fantastic to me. And at 20 years old, he's only worth 375k. I'm not sure how much they would want. Let's see. If it's a cheap deal... I might make it happen as soon as, even not even sell David Pierre. Oh, it's not a cheap deal. Maybe this fella, Mario Buckle, will compare him with David Pierre once again. See, if he, see how he stacks up. Uh, no, no. I mean, 20 flair, that's, that's pretty special. He's only 17 years old as well, so he will be absolutely fantastic. And Bayern Munich, only won 44 mil. Probably getting for about 25, but I'm just looking to spend my money. That's the problem. I know I'm not going to be here next season, and... So I'm looking to just waste the money. I think I think I just need to calm myself down. <laughs> so we've just played Spurs in the league and got stuffed 3-1, unfortunately. Raheem Harper, Andrew Ricardo, and Diet Upamancano with the goals for them. Alexander got a goal back for us to tie things up, but it was a pretty even game. Um, again, just not really taking our chances. So there's probably the final sale of the January transfer window. Matthias Lachaud joining standard for a fee that could rise to 15 and a half million quid. Now that does bolster our coffers once again in terms of, of the availability to sign players. 30 million quid we've got now. 
Um, there's just nobody I want, really, which is strange. There's usually somebody who I'm eager to sign. I would like to sign that centre half, but at 40 million quid, it's unlikely to happen. And um, that's probably the end of our January transfer business. We've still got Manchester United to play, uh, so we'll quickly go through that. But uh, unless something pops up majorly, and believe you me, I will be looking, uh, it's, it's unlikely we're going to spend that money. Despite some domination from us, we only get a one all draw at home against Manchester United. Mauricio Chan, our former man, put them in front 12 minutes in, but then he scored one goal to make up for it, and uh, we got a point. So the window is rapidly coming to a close and I don't think I'm going to be doing any more business. So this is where we sit currently in the Premier League table. We are in 7th. We are 5 points away from Liverpool, currently sitting in 4th. It's been a bit of a disaster the last 10 games or so. It's been uh, really, really tough since the injuries kicked in. And although a lot of the players are back now, we haven't really rediscovered our form. Hopefully, in the second half of this season, we can start kicking on and uh, get some wins under our belt. We will be returning. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe the Birmingham City and West Ham United game, former side, and uh, West Ham's always a decent little number to come back to. So, anyway, boys, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like, and if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.